Hello, my friends. It is time once again for the Morning Mindset. My name is Carrie Green, and you are obviously who you are, but I am thankful you joined me today for this opportunity to look at God's Word and let it shape the way we think about the day. That's what I mean when I say get our minds aligned with the truth of God's Word. Because as we see truth, the way God sees truth will be living according to reality. Before we jump into the Gospel of John today, I want to remind you about our nonprofit that we run. It's called Not a Needy Person, and it's designed to help those with tangible needs receive tangible help from other believers in the body of Christ. If you're interested in finding out how you could submit a need to be considered or how you could be one to help meet those needs, you can find out all you need to know by going to notaneedyperson.org. You'll also find a link to that website page in the description for this episode. Okay, today we're diving back into Jesus' comments to his disciples on the night he was betrayed. Judas Iscariot has already left the group to go and betray Jesus, and Jesus is giving teaching to those who remain, the 11 that are there in the room with him. And in John 14, beginning of verse 28, he's going to address the feelings that they've been having when they heard that he is going to be going away. And so he says, you heard me say to you, I'm going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced. Because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. So let's make sure we have the context right here. Jesus has already told his disciples that he is going away. What he's referring to is his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and that eventually he's going to ascend back to heaven. And then he says he will come to them again someday. Now, they were very disturbed by this. We read this earlier in chapter 14. They didn't know what to make of it. They were concerned. They were, you can just kind of hear it in the tone of the things they say. And Jesus is coming back to that fact. Now, first off, I want to pause there. Do you recognize that Jesus cares about the things that disturb us? And he cares that we are disturbed. Think about that in context of your situation right now. He's not indifferent. He's not off in some far reaches of the galaxy running things that have nothing to do with you, even though he is doing that. He's also very intimately acquainted with what's going on in your life, and he cares about it. Jesus here in his disciples' circumstance is speaking to what they're feeling. And Jesus speaks to our emotion. He speaks to our circumstance as well. But In the midst of that, he doesn't necessarily cater to our emotion. Notice what he says to his disciples. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. So what is he saying? He's saying, if you guys really understood this and wanted to respond out of love toward me as your Messiah, as your Savior, you would have been happy because I'm going to the Father. I'm getting a better deal than just hanging out on this planet. I get to go back to the Father where I began, where I belong. And the Father's greater than I. You see, he's willing to call them on the places where their emotion diverges from the right perspective they should be having. You see, Jesus cares enough about you, friend, not to allow you to just get bogged down in the mire of emotion. He wants to bring you back to proper perspective on the circumstances that you face. So he's going to remind you at times of who he is, even though you feel things are going awry, of what he's done for you, even though it seems things may be out of control. He's going to remind us faithfully of the truth of God's word that we can align our minds with so that we can live rightly in this world. And in verse 29, he says, and now I've told you before it takes place so that when it does take place, you may believe. Now, what I love here about what Jesus is doing is he's preparing them ahead of time. My wife and I used to do this with our kids when we'd be going on a trip, for example. We would tell them, now it's going to be very long and you're going to get tired and you might even get cranky. It's okay. You can just 
go to sleep and take a nap. You can do this. You can do this. We would give them alternatives and we'd say, but you're not going to be allowed to get cranky and angry and pick fights with your brother. You know, we would prepare them ahead of time. And friends, Jesus, as a loving Savior, does that as well. He prepares us ahead of time, telling us hardships are going to come, but He is going to be faithful in the midst of them. Friends, when those hard times come, we have got to cling to what He has told us beforehand. Lord Jesus, thank you for being such a caring and compassionate Savior that you walk with us through the slog of emotion and help us in everyday life. And please don't forget about our nonprofit that enables believers just like you to submit their tangible physical needs for consideration and other believers just like you to come along and help them with those needs. You can find out more at notaneedyperson.org.